Hello there, my name is Ismaus, and today we're going to be looking at 10 ways to blend textures in Blender. So we have two textures here and uh, our material here that we are previewing right now. And uh, we want to blend this dirt texture with this grass texture. And we want to be able to fit this, uh, the results of the blend into the diffuse color or base color here so that we can preview it as a single material. So to do that, we're going to utilize the color mix rgb node uh, so that we can use image one uh, this image texture and image two as color one and, uh, and color two respectively so let's do that now let's preview this final node so the first this the first or number one way to to blend the two textures is by just using this factor value which can give you a a, a value of zero will give you the texture in slot one and a value of one will give you the texture in slot two that's very very bare bones and you can't really get much interesting results using that so here are 10 ways to interestingly blend out the two textures uh, the first way is going to be using ambient occlusion so if you're using cycles uh, you can just do this directly by using by adding in the input ambient occlusion node and feeding the factor or color directly into your factor here. And you can see that uh, if we first preview this, you can see where the ambient occlusion is. Uh, this view here is EV and this is cycles. And the reason why you're not seeing that here is because if you're using EV, you have to go and first turn on ambient occlusion so that you can see the ambient occlusion. Now we can switch back to cycles so that we can see both our engines here is cycles and here is EV. Now we can use this here, this ambient occlusion as uh, the mask or factor for these uh, textures. So if we preview this and see what we have, it's not very prominent. So we can add a math node or a car ramp node to make the, the effect more pronounced. So I'm just going to make the contrast really high here and you can see how that is starting to affect. So what it's doing here is uh, it's using ambient occlusion as uh, the mask for the two uh, textures. Uh, I guess what I, what, sh what I should do is uh, switch the two textures so that uh, the dead texture is where the grass texture is now. So I'm just going to flip those so that we have that kind of thing. So that this looks like uh, it's moss growing around or whatever these are. Now, if we preview just the ambient occlusion, you can see how this looks. And uh, it's a bit grainy. Uh, that's because the ambient occlusion is based on the samples. The resolution or the quality of ambient occlusion uh, depends on the samples you use for your rendering. So if you want it to be less grainy, you want you will have to increase uh, the, uh, this, the samples you're using here. And another thing to note, if you're using ambient occlusion, is that uh, when you move the object, the ambient occlusion will fade. So that means that uh, your mask will also fade. Uh, this could be a good effect, but it can also be, but if you, if you have any animation in your scene, or if you have animation in your scene, it will not work very well. Uh, because if objects are moving around, then it means that uh, your textures will also be disappearing and uh, reappearing as well. It is best for when you have a static scene and uh, your objects are going to be stay placed in one area, meaning that the ambient occlusion is not going to change a lot. Number two, let's, let's have my list here. to texture painting. So this is very, very easy. You just have to create a new, let me first get rid of this mask. What you have to do is create a new texture, image texture, and then a new image, uh, 1080, that will be enough. And I use this as the factor. So if I fit this directly into this factor, then it means if I go to texture paint, I can paint 
whatever I want. But for this to work, you need to make sure that the object is UV unwrapped. And uh, this also limits you uh, because if you're painting on any surface, on one surface, it will also paint on other surfaces that are sharing that material, which means uh, that you, not get, you may not get the, the results you want on that surface. see but if you're using this make sure make sure that you're also saving your if you're using texture painting make sure to save the image after you're done to do that just switch to UV editing and make sure that you're seeing the image you have just painted and then go to image save as let's go back number three Vertex Paint. Vertex Paint works similarly to uh, to texture painting. The difference is I don't have to save an image. All the textures you, all the masks, or all, all the texturing, all the texturing information you make is saved onto the mesh itself, and you don't have to UV unwrap anything. So let's delete this. Now to Vertex Paint, you just have to select the object. Uh, you also need to have enough resolution into your geometry otherwise our uh, vertex paint will not work efficiently uh, this is because all the data you're painting is stored onto the mesh itself so if the mesh is not doesn't have enough vertices it's not going to get a lot of information uh, let me just give you an example here so to vertex paint first of all you need to add vertex colors on in on all the objects you want to vertex paint. So this one too, and this one too. I'm not going to add a vertex color on this one just to show you what happens if you don't have vertex colors on an object that is sharing a material with vertex colors in there. So let's select this, go to texture paint. Before we go to texture paint, let's just vertex paint or without looking at the materials. We can also preview them here in Cycles Render. So to go to vertex paint, just make sure you're selecting the mesh you want to paint on and then go to object vertex paint now if we start painting right away you see that uh, we're not seeing a lot happening that's because that uh, the default color is white so you need to change it to black so that you're painting on black let's make sure that you can see and uh, because we don't have enough vertices onto this object we're not able to paint a lot of information on here so to do that to paint in more information we can subdivide this a few times now if we go back to vertex paint you can see now we are able to paint more information you can also paint a solid color the entire surface using one color by changing the color remember you're also not limited to just white and black you can change the color to whatever you want Let's say blue and if you want to fill the entire surface or the entire mesh with that color you can go to paint set vertex color and that should give you one single color for the entire mesh and if you want to change that you can just paint as regularly another thing to note here is that uh, these are all sharing the same uh, material but we are only able to paint on this object selected if you want to paint on this you'd have to switch select this object and then go to vertex paint you also need to make sure that you have a vertex color selected and then you can start painting now remember we don't have a vertex color for this set here in the vertex colors if i try painting onto this it creates one automatically if I don't have any of that and uh, say I try using uh, the vertex colors we have painted for example on this we have painted this on this we have painted this and uh, to access that information just go into the materials shift a input shift a input vertex colors and you should see the name of the vertex color you have set which in this case is not coming up for some reason. 
C Shift A input vertex colors. Okay, it's not coming up, so I guess we will just have to paint it directly. So you will just have to type it in directly. So we also have this uh, under vertex colors here. And I guess if it's if you can't find it at the top here, you can just access the node under input vertex color and then just type in uh, the name directly there or just select it from the drop down now if i control shift click on this node you can see the vertex colors we have painted uh, remember this also works in cycles both in eevee and cycles so now because this doesn't have any vertex color uh, this vertex color input we have just created we, is showing an error when we select it but when we select the others you can see they don't have an error because they have that vertex color so to get rid of that error you just have to click on that and uh, you get that you can see the error has also cleared now we can use that as a factor to mask uh, the surface now say on this here i can go back to vertex paint and then start painting Instead, let me just paint black. You can see what we get. Okay. Number four, blending modes. Let's clear this vertex color. Get rid of that. Uh, so blending modes are very easy. If you've used Photoshop before, uh, you can easily blend you can access the same blending modes using the mix RGB node, which you can access under Shift A input. Uh, sorry, Shift A color mix RGB. Now the vertex, those blending modes are under here, so you just select that drop-down menu, and you can access them here. So you can use, for example, value, and it should blend that depending uh, using the value blending mode or color or overlay all the blending modes you have in Photoshop. You're not just limited to that. You To two images, you can further blend this. Let's say we have another image we want to add. Let's use, let's use this because it will be more visible. If you preview it, you can see how it looks. Uh, we can also blend it on top of this as like we are layering this on top of that. You can just Duplicate this using Shift D, fit this into color one, and then yeah, this into color one, and then this into color two. And then if you preview this node, you can see that we have blended this into this here. You can change this to any other type of blending mode and you will get the results you want. You can also, on top of that, blend in with uh, the vertex color we have used here. So we can just duplicate this further and use this as a factor. This time let's just use mix. And uh, you can see you can further blend in this. Or you can also just use blend modes here. And let's reset this.